I was on my usual garbage collection route in a suburban neighborhood. It was a beautiful day, and I was enjoying the fresh air and the sound of birds chirping. I had been working as a garbage man for over a decade, and I took pride in my work. As I was collecting the trash cans on one street, I noticed a woman walking towards me. I didn't think anything of it since it's not uncommon for people to ask me questions or thank me for my service, but as she got closer I could see that she was visibly upset. Excuse me, she said, her voice laced with anger. What do you think you're doing? I was taken aback by her aggressive tone, but I remained polite. I'm just doing my job, ma'am, I replied. The woman's face twisted into a scowl. Don't you lie to me, she spat. You're stealing my trash can. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I had never encountered someone accusing me of stealing a trash can before. Ma'am, I'm not stealing anything, I said calmly. I'm just collecting the trash. The woman continued to berate me, accusing me of being a thief and a criminal. I tried to explain that I was just following my route and that the trash can had been placed in the wrong spot, but she wouldn't listen. She started yelling at me, and soon a crowd of neighbors had gathered around. I was getting frustrated and upset, but I knew I had to remain professional. I didn't want to escalate the situation any further. That's when the woman started making racist comments towards me. It was then that I realized this was not just about a simple misunderstanding. This woman had a problem with me because of the color of my skin. As the Karen continued to yell at me, I could feel my blood boiling. I knew I had done nothing wrong, but her accusations were starting to get under my skin. The neighbors were trying to calm her down, but she wouldn't listen. I demand that you put my trash can back where you found it, she screamed. Ma'am, I can't do that, I said, trying to remain calm. I have to take the trash with me. You're a liar and a thief, she shouted. I'm calling the police. At that moment, I realized that this situation had gone from bad to worse. The Karen was not only accusing me of stealing her trash can, but now she was calling the police on me. I didn't know what to do. As I waited for the police to arrive, the Karen remained restless. She made racist comments and accused me of being a criminal. I couldn't believe that someone could be so hateful. The neighbors were getting angrier by the minute. They were defending me. But the Karen wouldn't back down. She was convinced that I had stolen her trash can. When the police finally arrived, they questioned both me and the Karen. I explained the situation to them, and they seemed to understand. But the Karen continued to make false accusations and was becoming more and more agitated. The neighbors were getting fed up with the Karen's behavior. They knew that I was innocent, and they wanted the police to know it too. Karen, however, continued yelling and making a scene. Officer, finally I've been waiting for you, she exclaimed. This man is a thief and is stealing my trash can. The police officer, a middle-aged man, approached me and asked me to explain the situation. I took a deep breath and explained, Officer, I'm just doing my job. I am a garbage man, and I was collecting the trash cans on this street when this woman accused me of stealing her trash can. I tried to explain that it was just a misunderstanding, but she wouldn't listen. Karen interrupted me. But, Officer, he's lying. He's a thief, and he's trying to steal my property. The officer turned to Karen and asked her to calm down. Ma'am, let this man speak, he said. I continued, Officer, I have been working as a garbage man for over a decade. I take pride in my work and I have never stolen anything. I was just doing my job and this woman started accusing me of being a thief. Karen interrupted me again, but my trash can was in front of my house and he took it. He's a liar. The officer turned to Karen and said, Ma'am, we need to verify the facts before we can take any action. Let me talk to the neighbors and see if the bag can confirm your story. The officer then went to talk to the neighbors who explained the situation to him. They told him that Karen had a history of making false accusations and that I had done nothing wrong. When the officer came back, he said, Ma'am, your trash can was in the wrong spot. This man was just doing his job and he did nothing wrong. Karen was starting to realize that she had made a mistake. But officer, he's black and I thought he was stealing from me, she said. The officer looked at her sternly and said, Ma'am, that is not an excuse for making false accusations. You need to apologize to this man. As the police officer spoke, Karen seemed to be getting more and more pissed. Finally, she storms back into her house without a single word, leaving the rest of us outside. My jaw dropped at how unwilling she was to apologize to me, but I'm glad that the police officers and neighbors were consoling me. The police officer then turned to me and said, I'm sorry for the trouble, sir. You're free to go now. As I was getting ready to leave, one of the neighbors came up to me and said, I'm sorry you had to go through that. We all know you're a good man and that you were just doing your job. I thanked them and got back into the garbage truck. As I drove away, I couldn't help but think about what had just happened. I had been accused of stealing a trash can and the police had been called on me. 
But in the end, I had been proven innocent, and the Karen had been exposed as a liar and a racist. It was a frustrating and upsetting experience, but I was grateful for the support of everyone else. As I finished my route for the day, I couldn't help but feel a sense of pride in my work. Despite the obstacles and challenges that I faced, I knew that I was making a difference in my community. It's unbelievable someone would accuse a hard-working garbage man of stealing. Karen needs to learn some manners and respect for people doing their jobs. Glad justice was served in the end. I work at a buy-sell-trade toy store that sells both new and used toys. This means that people can bring in their old toys and we will buy them for either cash or store credit. Then we will put them out on the shelves. Store credit is always higher than cash when we buy toys from people. A lady with her teenage daughter came in a few days ago to sell about three boxes of toys. Since I was the only person trained to take trades, I was in charge of pricing out the toys and negotiating a fair price with my manager. Let's say I came up with $125 store credit or $100 cash. The teenager chose the store credit and I prepared the paperwork for the mother to sign. However, the mother didn't like the amount and asked if I could go higher. She suggested $200 store credit at the very least. I told her I would talk to my manager. My manager agreed to raise the store credit to $150 and I relayed this information to the mother. She was upset but eventually decided to discuss it with her daughter. I continued with my other tasks while they talked. After about half an hour, the mother started staring at me, but I had to finish checking out the customers in line before I could talk to her. Once I finished with the other customers, I asked if the mother had decided. She said she would accept the $150 store credit if we could throw in a $1.30 collectible gold-plated Lego keychain that we have on display. I told her that I could not give her the keychain, but I could give her $1.120 and the keychain, which would be a total store credit of $1.180. But I was not authorized to do that. She was upset for a solid five minutes and tried to negotiate with me, but I told her the only options were $1.150 store credit, $1.100 cash, or $1.120 store credit and the keychain. She ultimately chose the $1.150 store credit and warned us that she would leave a negative Yelp review later that night. We didn't care much, though. Who checks Yelp these days anyway? I can't believe some people are so cheap. Props to the store employee for handling the situation like a pro. Also, who even uses Yelp anymore? If you enjoyed today's stories, check out the other videos on your screen now. Submit your own stories at you'retheJerk.com. Subscribe now or you're definitely the jerk. This incident took place in 2016, once again as I was working as a lifeguard at the pool in my neighborhood. This year, I was the head lifeguard and worked directly under our pool manager at the time, getting groomed to take over the position the next year as our pool manager was looking to get out of that job. It involved me, my mom, our entitled person whom I'll call Alice, who is about the same age as my mom, and Alice's entitled parents that she still lived with. One of the rules that we had to add to the pool that year was that anyone coming to the pool was no longer allowed to talk with the lifeguards or pool attendants, nor were we allowed to talk to the customers while on duty. The meaning was that customers aren't supposed to have conversations with us, and we aren't supposed to have conversations with them, but it's worded so poorly. This was added because we'd been having a lot of issues with people coming to the pool and distracting whoever was on shift, which almost led to a small child drowning the year before. It was also added because everyone was sick of having to deal with one person in particular, who is the topic of this entire incident, Alice. Alice loved to come to the pool and just talk at anyone and everyone, usually incredibly loudly as well, and generally tried to be the center of attention. If she wasn't trying to chat up the person on duty, she was walking around the pool and bothering the other customers, or even striking up conversations with the children that came by. It was about 11-ish in the morning, a beautiful summer day and a Saturday no less. I'd been keeping an eye on the kids swimming in the deep end, as both had only just barely passed their swimming test to be able to swim on that side of the pool, and I wasn't convinced that they weren't about to slip under the water at any moment. As much as I would have liked to have them get a little more practice before allowing them to swim without a floor directly at their feet, they did technically pass the swim test we have, so I couldn't deny them access to the deep end, as I'm watching the children, in walks Alice. I'm not certain on her age, but I know she's about the same age as my mom, so she's in her 40s or 50s at the time of the incident. Now, not to defend the entitled person this is about, but Alice does have a physical issue requiring the use of a special walker and possibly a mental health issue that I won't go into. 
This isn't meant to defend any of the actions that are in here, just to give everyone the full information behind all of what takes place. Plus, as someone who also has a physical disability and some mental health issues as well, I'm familiar with the day-to-day -day struggle, and I tend to be lenient in favor of others that also have issues of their own. That leniency only goes so far, however, and in Alice's case, I know that she tends to try to use those disabilities to get her way a lot. I can't go into a lot of the cases because it'll detract from this incident, but just know that this 40, 50-something-year-old woman was a problem for more than just me, and the actions that took place here were the result of the straw finally breaking the camel's back after three years. Not long after she'd gotten her thing settled, Alice swam over to the side of the pool where I was set up and began attempting to hold a conversation with me, distracting me from being able to monitor the kids swimming at the time. I did my best to ignore her or give non-committal nods and grunts, but eventually Alice began to splash me and shout that I'm not paying attention to her after about 20 minutes of this. She had been warned multiple times this season that she is not allowed to do this as it poses a risk to the other pool patrons, and had been told that if she continued to do so, she would be asked to leave. I reminded her about this once more and turned my attention back to the kids. Alice's response was to splash me again and continue to talk at me. Oh well, I had warned her. I then informed her she had to leave for breaking the rule again. Alice threw a fit and was complaining and protesting that she had done nothing wrong while I retrieved her pass and handed it to her. I informed her that she had been asked multiple times this season not to hold conversations with the guards, and that since she continued to do so, she now had to leave the pool. Upon hearing this, Alice refused to leave and brushed it off and ignored the request because, You're not allowed to talk to me referring to the same rule behind the reason she had been asked to leave. Remember, it was worded that customers cannot talk to lifeguards while they are on duty and lifeguards cannot talk to customers while on duty. So her argument was that I wasn't allowed to tell her she had to leave for breaking the rules because the rules said guards couldn't talk to customers, even though she knew the spirit of the rule meant that we can't have conversations that would distract us. When she was told that she had to leave or the police would be called to remove her, she then called her mother as well as demanded to get Derek's, not the real name of my manager, number, which I informed her that I'm not allowed to hand out. I told her that she could wait for her mother to arrive, but she had to leave the pool premises and wait at the bench outside, which Alice refused to do, claiming that she didn't want to have to sit in the sun in her bikini. Alice also said that since she was disabled, she couldn't pack her things on her own and needed her mother to help her. When I offered to help her pack, Alice laughed and refused. As Alice continued to refuse to leave the pool area, I took out the pool's phone and acted like I was calling the police, mostly to try and bluff, since I really didn't want to have to fill out an incident report for calling them and let Alice know that they were going to be called. Alice, however, called my bluff. While this was going on, my mom, who was also at the pool and had been part of the pool committee at the time, tried to help defuse the situation and take some of the heat off me by telling Alice off and reminding her of the rules that were handed out at the start of the pool season. Alice turned her frustrations onto my mom and began arguing with her, eventually leading to my mom to just tell her to be quiet and stop talking to her and leave already. Alice's mother arrived before the police could be called and told me that while she respected that I was just trying to do my job, I had no right or authority to kick her daughter out. Alice told her mother in a very sarcastic manner that the police were supposedly on their way, which further aggravated her mother. Her mother began to shout at me about this. You don't call the police because someone is talking to you. And you can't do this. You're supposed to be the lifeguard. You're not the Gestapo. As well as, this is a free country. You don't act like Hitler. Yes, those were all exact quotes from her tirade. I'm not even exaggerating. Me kicking her daughter out was likened to being bloody Hitler. I tried to inform her that the police were because Alice was refusing to leave, not because she'd been ignoring the rules and trying to hold a conversation with me after having been repeatedly warned against doing this all summer. But her mother ignored this and continued to rant and shout at me. These are all actual quotes and were actually submitted to the HOA as evidence for the upcoming events. We had a recording at the time because my mom was smart and I unfortunately didn't have my cell on me because we weren't allowed to have them with us on duty. I'll see if she still has the old phone with the recordings later. This isn't a dictatorship! You can't call the police just because someone was talking to you! You're not in charge here! I'm going to get you kicked out of this job. The pool is supposed to be a place for fun! None of the other guards are like this. Everyone else is nice and polite, except for you. You're not a guard. You're a Gestapo! 
I told her mother about the rule and attempted to show her the rules, but Alice's mother didn't want to hear it, screaming, I don't care about the crappy rules, you can't kick someone out for talking. When Alice, incorrectly, informed her mother that my mom had called the police and told her not to talk to her, my mom, her mother rounded on my mom and began to swear and verbally attack her, causing a scene. It's a free country. She can talk to whoever she wants to. You can't tell her not to talk to you. I continued to try to defuse the situation and explain that I was merely trying to do my job and follow and enforce the rules. Alice's mother told me she didn't want to hear it and that I should just shut up and go sit down and read my book. It should be noted that at this time there were children swimming in the pool and that Alice's mother had just told me to put their lives at risk by telling me not to pay attention to the swimmers. As angry as she may have been, demanding that someone deliberately endanger people is a cause for concern, especially as these were children who can very easily drown. This is irresponsible and worrying, no matter how angry someone might be. I urge the board that this in particular should be paid attention to and discussed should any actions be taken. It is not right that someone outright orders another person to intentionally ignore and endanger the lives of others. When I informed her that this wasn't allowed while there are swimmers, especially children in the pool, she responded with, don't give me that bullshit, and that she had pictures of me reading whilst there were children in the pool. These pictures never existed, and I never read or allowed myself to get distracted if there was someone in the pool, threatening that she would use this to get me fired. It is my belief that this may have been a poor attempt at blackmail, as the implication she was giving with her tone and words was that she would do this unless I allowed Alice to remain at the pool. I politely informed Alice and her mother that they were welcome to bring that issue as well as their complaints at the immediate problem to the board at the next meeting and that Alice was merely being told to leave for that day, not permanently. However, I was in charge and the rules state that I'm allowed to revoke anyone's pool admittance for breaking the rules at my discretion and that if a patron refuses to leave after being asked to vacate the premises, then the guards have every right and in fact are required, to call the police to remove the person from the pool area, Alice's mother continued to swear, rant, and cause a scene, confronting both myself and my mother while Alice insulted and mocked the me, saying that he has to have Mommy do it for him and he's in charge, but Mommy's really the one in charge here. At this point, I walked away and proceeded to actually call the police this time. Meanwhile, Alice's mother sat down on one of the lounge chairs, when Alice told her that the police had already been called and were on their way, having assumed that my mom had called them despite the fact that the only ones that had used any phones were Alice herself and me, Alice's mother said that she would wait for the police. I informed the police what was going on at the pool and requested their help with the situation. The police told him that they were sending squad cars to the location. This was at about 3.45. At 3.50, Alice and her mother left the pool shortly before police arrived on the scene. When the police arrived, I once again told them what had happened, and when they asked to see the rules, obliged and showed them exactly where in the rules the issue at hand was stated. The police went outside to speak with Alice and her mother, who were sitting on the bench outside the pool at the time. They also spoke with Derek, who arrived as they were talking to Alice and her mother. Derek came in after and wanted to know what was going on, almost laughing as he described Alice and her mother in tears and acting like they were scared for their lives when talking to the police. But the moment they saw him, the tears shut off and they started complaining and demanding, I get fired on the spot. Nearly everyone in the neighborhood is used to their antics. As per our guidelines, until there was a board meeting to have a hearing about the incident, Alice and her mother were given a temporary ban from entering pool grounds while the board did their own investigation into things. However, this doesn't end here. Oh no, that'd be way too easy and simple for Alice and her family. Five days later, Alice came by the pool in the afternoon, remaining at the play area behind the fence surrounding the pool, and proceeded to call out to me repeatedly until she had my attention. There were people in the pool, including an off-duty pool attendant at the time. When she had the attention, she began attempting to talk to me, though what she said was unclear, as she wasn't being loud anymore. I mistook her as another homeowner at first, as she did not have her walker with her. It wasn't until I raised my hand in greeting that it was clear this was Alice, as she assumed this gesture meant something different because she began to mockingly call, You can't do anything to me. I'm not at the pool. This was incorrect, as her temporary ban covers the entire pool property, playground included. 
not just the pool. I'd made sure to check beforehand with my boss about that detail when I learned about the temporary ban because I worried something like this would happen. She walked away, but circled back a few minutes later and repeated the process again, calling for my attention and then claiming that she couldn't get in trouble for doing this as she wasn't in the pool. I pointed out to her that the playground was still considered part of the pool property and that she was trespassing and violating the temporary ban she'd been given. Alice continued to stand at the fence and yell into the pool until I picked up the phone and called my boss to report this. I called Derek and reported this, who then asked to be put on speaker and explained to Alice that if she continued to harass the staff and trespass when she'd been explicitly told not to, he would have the rest of the board put her family on a permanent ban from the premises without having to wait for the hearing and for their side of the story. Alice continued to do this until others at the pool left, assuming that they were getting up to head to my boss's house to provide their own witness statements. In the end, the board met with Alice and her family about the incident where they continued to claim that they were being treated unfairly and that I should be fired and fined for harassing them. The board wasn't having it, especially after my boss shared the incident of Alice violating her temporary ban to harass me, which her family hadn't been aware she'd done. Ultimately, Alice was allowed back at the pool, but now she had to have one of her family members come with her and stay with her the entire time she was there, essentially babysitting their adult child, and that she was barred from talking to any of the guards on duty at the risk of permanently losing access to the pool. I didn't have any more major issues with her or her family that summer other than her mother sneakily trying to record me as I worked, as if she was going to catch me breaking the rules and have the HOA sentence reversed. That was put to a stop eventually when Derek threatened to give the entire family a permanent ban as well as taking legal actions because we live in a two-party consent state and her recording was also recording the children at the pool. Personally, I think the threat of bringing the police in on charges of recording kids is what made her stop more than anything else. There were other incidents that took place involving her that summer, but nothing else that I needed to call police over or that directly relates to this whole thing, though they never did apologize. And the next year, I'd moved on from working at the pool to the higher-paying opportunity of working at my local pharmacy. She and her family seemed pretty pleased that I wasn't working at the pool the next year until they found out I was one of the people in charge of handling her medications. They tried to complain about me to my new boss when they came by the drive-thru and saw me at the window, and I just stood behind my manager as she confusedly picked up the phone to talk to them silently laughing behind her in full view of the family as they tried to say that I needed to be let go from my new job because they got in trouble because of their actions at my old job. I got to explain the whole issue to her later, and we never saw them get their medicine from us ever again. As a final aside, I'm picking up work at the pool again this year, now in an assistant manager role, as well as returning to my head lifeguard position, and I can't wait to see the looks on their faces when they see me sitting in my chair again. A fine pool day ruined by some entitled people. What a waste. I can't believe some people can be so entitled and rude. Props to the lifeguard for standing their ground and keeping everyone safe.